This is a really thoughtfully designed and built homemade electric outboard motor. And this is an electric outboard motor you can buy for $3,600. With an electric outboard like this, costing thousands of dollars, many people are tempted to build their own, like this one. But is that a good idea? <laughs> there are several videos on YouTube showing how people have built their own electric outboard motors. And some of those motors seem to work pretty good. But we don't often see follow-up videos showing how those motors held up over time. Like perhaps the initial ride was the best trip with that motor. Maybe they had some problems later on. Maybe they're not happy with the motor after a little while. But a lot of times we don't see that. But first I wanted to talk about socks. That's right, yes, socks. These are American-made wool socks. A lot of people think of wool socks and think of that scratchy wool sweater they had when they were a kid. These are actually soft and they're comfortable. I started trying out these Camel City socks. Yes, they're a bit more money, but they're made out of wool and they're made in America, in North Carolina. I've been trying them out recently and I like them a lot. They're comfortable, they're durable, they don't itch. They seem to keep my feet from getting too hot or too cold. I also spend a bunch of time walking around in my socks, which I know I probably shouldn't do. These have been very comfortable and very durable. If you're interested in checking out Camel City American Made Socks, I have a link in my description, or you can scan this QR code right here, and you can get a 10% discount using my code WAYNE10. If you've watched some of these videos, have you also noticed that they don't usually show a lot of specifics and details? Like the cost of components, or a complete list of everything they bought or fabricated. Often, they don't share specifications and details on how they wired everything up and got it all working. Or how they overcame challenges that they had trying to get it all to work. Maybe they're just really good at all this stuff. But most likely, they probably figure it would be quite boring for most people to watch them going through all of the minutia and details of how everything is connected and wired and soldered together. But there are some things that these projects all seem to have in common. Every home-built electric outboard I have seen is built using an old gasoline outboard engine housing and lower unit. And that makes sense, because if you can find an old broken two-stroke outboard motor for cheap or for free, you've got everything you need. And because they're building the motor this way, one of the biggest challenges is coupling an electric motor power head to the existing spline shaft that goes down to spin the prop. This often requires creating a precision piece that can fit over the splines of the shaft going down to the prop and also connect to the electric motor output shaft. It is a critical component to making the project work, and if done incorrectly, can cause vibration or worse. It seems that the people who post these videos and build these electric outboard motors are very skilled at problem solving and fabricating components. Whether it's on a 3D printer, using a welder, or coming up with ways to be able to make aluminum brackets to hold everything in place. And lastly, they probably need soldering skills and a good understanding of electrical components and circuitry, as well as voltages and matching the right components together. Let's take a closer look at the really amazing motor that my friend Dan is testing on the back of his vintage StarCraft. This motor is a 10 kilowatt motor that is similar to what is used to run a golf cart. For comparison, the 9.9 .9 horsepower equivalent e-propulsion Navy that is running here is only a six kilowatt motor. As you can see, there's a lot of other components hooked up to make this all work. And there's copper piping running around the motor. These pipes have water pumped through them from the impeller to help cool this motor. It's a well thought out and set up motor. Let's see it in action. We tested it out using my 48 volt, 100 amp hour, Epoch battery, just to see how well they would work together. We hit speeds over 10 miles per hour, and the boat felt really good, even with the 100 pound battery in back. I even got a chance to get behind the wheel 
and feel how well this boat pulled. But there are a couple of common challenges every one of these electric outboard motor builds seem to have, besides the fabrication and wiring challenges I mentioned before. And those two challenges are heat and noise. First, I'll talk about the heat. These electric motors get very hot when operated at full throttle. And these builds usually have all of the components placed very close to the motor so that everything can fit within a suitably sized cover. This little Hankai electric outboard has the simplest solution, heat sinks, and lots of slots in the cover to try to keep it cool. This electric outboard is running a 48 volt electric fan to try to keep things cool. It was designed with a 48 volt fan so that no additional voltage converters would be needed or an additional 12 volt battery. This was selected so that it can run off the same 48 volt battery as the motor. And the big 10 kilowatt motor on Dan Starcraft has the clever copper tubing wrapped around the motor with water pumping through it. But even with this, this motor apparently will overheat when run at full throttle for more than a few minutes at a time in a hot environment, like running it on a hot summer day. It just stops. <laughs> and I bet if we opened up that cowling in the front, which we might want to do, just let some air in, um, it's probably pretty warm in there. It seems that the bigger the motor, the more heat it creates. But how do the commercially produced electric outboard motors deal with the heat issue? Well, the most common approach is by putting the motor below the water. Both of my e-propulsion electric outboards have the motor all the way underwater. And of course, that's not really an option for people who want to build their own electric outboard motor. Because this arrangement isn't nearly as cheap or easy to find as an old broken two-stroke outboard. But it also seems to really help with the second problem as well, which is noise. Well, the whine of an electric motor is not nearly as loud as an old two-stroke. It certainly isn't a comforting or pleasant sound, especially on this smaller size Hankai electric outboard motor, which is significantly louder than my e-propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus. Check this out. And yes, I know, I keep mentioning this little Hankai electric outboard motor, which is not a homemade electric outboard motor, but it certainly is assembled like one. And being that it's that way, it's actually a really good platform for testing and modifications and experimenting. Matter of fact, that's what my friend Dan has done with the broken one of these that I gave him. He's been trying different controllers on there and playing around with it because it's a nice platform to be able to experiment. And these aren't very expensive at all. So if you're still thinking to yourself, is it a good idea to build my own electric outboard motor? And is it cheaper than buying one? It really comes down to your skills, abilities, and resources, and whether or not it's a project you think you can undertake. I know for some of you, You've probably been discouraged from building one, seeing some of the challenges that I might have pointed out here and the shortcomings of these types of motors. On the other hand, you might embrace that and think about ways that you can overcome those challenges. You might have some really great insights or ideas to help with the heating and the noise. And you also might be wondering, what's with this one right here? Well, I didn't build this one. But this is another 48 volt electric outboard motor and it's in an old two stroke case. This one's not as powerful as the Navy 6 and it's a lot heavier. If you'd like to see more content about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to make some more content about this motor right here. As for me personally, I would actually really just love to see if this Hankai components could fit inside of my little Johnson Seahorse 3 cover. I think it would be kind of cool to be able to fit all of that inside of that housing. However, I would not want to sacrifice that Johnson two-stroke outboard because it runs. But maybe I someday could find a housing that's similarly cool and classic like that 
and try to see if this will fit inside of there. And I think that could be a fun project to undertake. However, the reality is the sound of this motor is like nails on a chalkboard. And I don't care much for it. If you are interested in watching more electric outboard content, I have a complete playlist of videos about electric outboard motors of a variety of different kinds and situations and things to do with those types of motors. And I'll put a link in the video description to Dan's channel if you'd like to go check his channel out. He has a lot of different types of projects that he works on. It's not just electric outboard motors, including more content about the 10 kilowatt outboard motor on the StarCraft and all kinds of other projects that he's done over the years. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and here is the next video YouTube has picked for you. It's based on things that you're interested in and have recently watched. You stay safe out there on the water.